In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use sociological theories or lenses. So to kick this off, let's talk about three of the very foundational sociological lenses. Now, there's a ton of them out there, uh, but these are really some of the three founding or core uh, theory, theoretical orientations in sociology. So the first one is going to be uh, social conflict theory. And social conflict theory really has to do with power struggles. So you can think of society as being made up of hierarchies, right? And so you've got, you've got this pyramid scheme type thing, right? With the elite way up here on top, and they have structural ways of keeping people below them down. And sort of this, these hierarchies of structural oppression uh, sort of go down the pyramid. And so one of the things that we're trying to do when we use a, a social conflict theory, uh, looking at a system like higher ed, is we're looking for hidden agendas. Um, where are, are there class, race, gender inequalities built into the system? Uh, and so, so, for example, take like a degree. If you're going to look at the value of a degree, um, one of the questions you might have from a so, so, social conflict lens is, uh, do the degrees that students get actually just reinforce this power hierarchy, this unfair system? Because some people have access to elite institutions and get certain degrees that lead to certain kinds of jobs and power, and others have less access or degrees that don't take them as far. And so really, are, are the college degrees we're offering just reinforcing this pyramid? So that's an example of how you might uh, think critically from a social conflict standpoint. Uh, next, we're going to move to structural functionalism. Now, this thinks less of society as a hierarchy of, of inequalities and tends to think of society more as an organism, right, made up of interlocking systems. So we're going to try my hand at some art here. So here is a human body. I know it looks wonderful. And long neck. And from this orientation, you could say that um, you know, there's the circulatory system of blood pumping through the body. Um, there's going to be a definitely green, a, you know, skeletal structure. So there's bones in the body um, and so forth. And so I could build, right, show all these systems. And they're all interlocking uh, and overlapping. And each of them gives a kind of solidarity and structure to the whole. They function together. And of course, things can go wrong. There can be, there's, you know, manifest or expected ways for things to function, but there are sometimes latent things. Any system sometimes has hidden or latent unexpected consequences or dysfunctions even uh, in their system. And so whenever something is out of whack, then there has to be a change to the system to keep it flowing again. And so if we're going to think of higher ed in this way, um, we might think of, so to use that example of degrees, we would think less about how are the degrees reinforcing, you know, hierarchies of unfairness, but we would think about how are degrees perhaps part of a system uh, in our society, of training up the next generation of leaders or of technicians with the skills they need, right? Okay, so then we move to the last of these lenses, which is going to be symbolic interactionism. And this is about shared meanings and symbols. So here, let me draw a flag, okay? And so this flag, um, we'll just say it's an American flag so that we've got some stars on it and some stripes. And to the symbolic interactionists, they, they say, what are the shared meanings people have? So when there's patterns of social behavior that sort of create and build up society, um, when people see symbols like this flag, what do they think? Do people all have a shared sense of what this means? Right? Or do some people have very different ideas? To, to many, this might be a symbol of pride and nationalism, patriotism. Right? Um, to others, maybe uh, the opponents of the USA in a war, it might be a symbol of terror or opposition or even evil. Right? Or even to some uh, critical social commentators within the US, that they may have mixed feelings about the meaning of our flag. Right? And so if something uh, is politically charged, emotionally charged as a, as a flag, right? it's, it ha has shared meanings among people, um, but at the same time, those meanings can shift. And so society itself is made up of those shared meanings, and thus it's fluid, because meanings change among people as their patterns of social interaction change, right? And so in a way you can think of it, you know, it's almost like the matrix. Society exists in our minds, um, and, and it's made up. It's very, this is a very micro view, where you could say that the, both of these up here are macro views. They look at society on the large scale. Here, it sort of takes individuals projecting society or reality into existence through their shared meanings. And that's, that's sort of the approach there. And so if you're going to think of a degree, um, so here the way people, the, the way symbolic interactionists might think of a college degree is that 
Um, on one hand, it, it creates cultural reproduction. It shows, it, it passes on appreciation of certain aspects of art or ideas in a culture, right? Or you might simply say symbolically, the degree has value apart from, you know, whatever power or economic training it may offer. Um, it simply has value because enough people say it has value and that gives it a symbolic value. Okay. So that's the way we would look at these, whoops, we'd look at these three main lenses. 